News is at 7. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. I'm, I'm happy to report some uh, breaking news. We have a cessation of hostilities and a peace deal in place in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Harvard. Uh, Harvard president saying the university would begin reinstatement proceedings for students who were, quote, placed on involuntary leaves of absence, uh, unquote, and evaluate the disciplinary case of those who participated in the encampment at Harvard. University officials will also meet with students to address questions about the endowment. And this ends peacefully. Thank oh, goodness. It's over. Now grab your things. Spring semester's done. A three-week-old encampment at Harvard. Um, hey, how are kitties doing with the hunger strike? The same sort of mealy-mouthed uh, uh, closure to the encampment had uh, occurred at Cornell as well. Um, the at Princeton pro Palestinian uh, pro Hamas student group protest said on social media the administration and facility staff and, uh, were trying to clear the encampment. So I guess the hunger strike and the solidarity hunger strike for one day attended by some Princeton professors that we brought to you a couple of days ago is still ongoing. You know, these uh, communities are unique, they have their own particular dynamics uh now uh here locally at depaul unfortunately there has been no peace deal negotiated by the feckless administration at depaul and so the uh, school end of uh, school year music festival the fest has been canceled that's so stupid i mean they should go through the crowd too and see get out your student id to see who really are the students and who's the antifa and the blmers that have infiltrated the quad at DePaul Prep. Well, that's the not difference. DePaul Prep, I'm sorry, DePaul University. So. I, I, I mean, I don't, yeah. It makes no difference to me. makes no difference to them. Well, why do the law-abiding, tuition-paying students have to pay for it and not have their music festival? Because they're not in control of the campus. That's why. Okay. Yeah, the end. That, that's how it goes. <laughs> that's how it goes. All right, Once bye. you cede control to the barbarian yeah. set, you don't get to petition them. Uh, to um, abide your wishes. This is not, um, these are not uh, peaceful pluralist types. They're, they're not oriented that way as if their behavior hasn't clearly so demonstrated. For more on uh, this topic, we're pleased to be joined by uh, Frank Ferruti. He's the executive director of the think tank MCC Brussels, a former academic. You can also get his writings at Frank Ferruti, F U R E. D-I, frankferruti.substack.com. Frank Ferruti, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Hi, here. Nice talking to you. Um, so um, are you um, inspired by the peace that has been brokered, at least on some Ivy League campuses? Well, I mean, <laughs> these are just uh, administrative uh, tricks that are being used as a way of uh, trying to avoid having to confront the fact that there's some very bad things going on on campuses. And instead of dealing with them in an honest, uh, overt fashion, what happens is that you allow people who are causing trouble to dictate terms, and you respond by flattering them. Uh, you, you respond by pretending that nothing, you know, nothing important has really happened, and that life can eventually carry on. Uh, the um, sort of uh, Antifa like conduct of students at the uh, some of the you know allegedly uh, best universities and colleges in the west here in america do you think that is a social contagion or is that something a little bit more serious where the um, uh, the adherence to that sort of the the expressions of that sort of intolerance uh, are not going to so easily dissipate as these kids move off campus and into something approximating the real world? No, I mean, this is a, a deeply entrenched uh, phenomenon. 
you have to remember that uh, these ideas are part and parcel of that curriculum. I mean, they already learned that or exposed to that in school. So by the time they get to university, they become socialized into values that are basically countercultural. They they are deeply uh, suspicious and hostile to anything that's remotely linked to the Western world, the Western way of life. And you have a situation where the faculty in many universities really becomes uh, uh, actively uh, involved in uh, advoca- advocating these ideas so that young people become socialized, even without knowing, into things like uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, sort of uh, critical race theory, you know, all these things that are uh, essentially have one thing in common, which is that they, they think that the Western world and America and Britain and Western societies are essentially uh, uh, to be challenged and brought down. And what's interesting is that uh, everybody, you know, I, I talk to people all the time and they always say, Frank, when is this going to end? Everybody seems to think that this is just a, a temporary blip. But actually, they've been seeing this, saying this now for about 25 years. And the situation on campuses is getting worse and worse and worse all the time. And um, these, this time, what's happened, what's never happened before, is not just only the faculty, but the administration has been essentially covering everything up, pretending that nothing is really going on in order to avoid any kind of accountability. So I'm very pessimistic about anything good coming out of these, this development. There has been um, some response. Um, you know, there's a lag uh, effect here because uh, these uh, campus uh, groups, these model Hamas campus groups, and the their funders are well organized. And, um, you know, the forces for peaceful pluralism are not. But there has been some response in terms of uh, Israel and uh, Israeli and Israeli American uh counter protests, peaceful ones with the American flag and the Israeli flag and just showing up on college campuses, showing up uh, yesterday in Times Square. And I wonder if you think that uh, there is a, 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 enough of an awakening to meet the moment, or are we still pretty far away from that? Well, you know, these counter demonstrations are, are brilliant, and I'm, I'm really glad that uh, finally, these things are kicking in. But you have to remember, you know, it was invading months and months and months and months for uh, these this kind of reaction to occur. And at the moment, the, uh, the forces, you know, that are waving American and Israeli flag are really a handful of people, a small minority of very brave individuals. Uh, but the interesting thing is, is you, you yourself use the expression counter-demonstration. And whenever we're countering something, we're countering something that's in ascendancy. Yeah. And that's the, that's, that is really the difficulty that we have to kind of confront, which is that uh, at the moment, the, kind of, uh, the ideals of, of Hamas are, are ideals that are readily uh, sort of uh, embraced by students. I don't know if you've noticed, but if you go on any campus, you can predict in advance that anybody who's LGBTQ, anybody who's Black Lives Matter, anybody who's into transgender politics, will almost, without, without, without a thinking about it, become spontaneously a supporter of Hamas. Now, how does that happen? Mm-hmm. Uh, it happens because there is, uh, there's a kind of uh, fertile terrain where these uh, anti-Western sentiments are, are, are flourishing. And, uh, and it's only under rare circumstances that people are able to challenge them or there are brave individuals who are prepared to, to, be, to stand up and be counted. And we just really need much more of that. But do you think that some of them don't even know what they're fighting for and they're just bored and they want to be a part of something because they don't have God in their life and this is a cool thing to do right now? Yes, I mean, I think that's part of it. But, you know, when it becomes really cool to be anti-Semitic and really cool to essentially uh, support a, a, a terroristic jihadist group, then we have to stand back a little bit as to what has happened. Because when I was young, we, did, you know, there were many, many really cool things to do. Some of them 
uh, were ones that my parents didn't particularly like, but it certainly didn't extend to this kind of extreme, uh, radical, and corrosive, destructive sentiment. And I think what I really worry about is that uh, these sentiments, which people thoughtlessly absorb, are you know are, are sentiments that are you know not just simply confined to campuses. I mean, they're they're very powerful within our cultural elites. You know, Hollywood, Netflix, these kinds of institutions pump out many of these sentiments. You know, time and time again. So it's not, and the music industry does that as well. So it's not surprising that this that this kind of conformism to Hamas uh, type of ideology uh, is almost thoughtlessly absorbed. Um, I, I wonder, with respect to these counter demonstrations, too, if they're still too defensive in terms of the posture that's being taken. I understand, you know, explaining and debunking the propaganda that's coming from those. Uh, persisting with the claim that Israel is committing a genocide. But I, I still think there's a lack of moral clarity in some of the rhetoric. It's all very much, like I said, responsive rather than declarative. And let me give you an example of what I mean as a good example. Uh, Nisim uh, Luke was uh, at that Times Square counter-demonstration on Monday night. He's uh, the father of Shani Luke, who was that uh, tattoo artist who was murdered in the October 7 terrorist attack. And her picture has become iconic because it was basically of her half-naked body in the back of a pickup, pickup truck with a bunch of Hamas terrorists. And the AP re- uh, reporter who took that picture, AP Photog, who took that picture was criticized. But actually, her father came to the defense of that uh, photographer because in, in one photo of her, you see... Uh, uh, you know, a twenty-something tattoo artist dancing at the music festival, and the other one you see her lifeless body. He said this: the picture is very important because this picture shows from one side Shani, beautiful, amazing, bright light to the world, and from the other side you see these militants in the pickup with machine guns that bring trouble and pain to the world. Nobody can mix these two pictures. And whenever you don't know who you are, you don't know: am I the bad guy? Am I the good guy? You don't know? Look at these pictures, and it immediately straightens everything out. You see that Shani uh, is the light, and that Shani is part of the Jewish people. We are the light. The other part is darkness. They bring pain to the world and suffering, and that's what happened to her. She died that day. I mean, uh, and that goes for the other families, hostages and people, family members who are killed. But it seems to me like we need that sort of moral clarity, that sort of uh, you know, synthesis of what the hell we're talking about here instead of a lot of mealy mouth uh, blather from politicians. No, I, I totally agree with you. I think there is a, a kind of a real uh, uh, trend towards avoiding the issue at stake so that, you know, whenever uh, um, protesters talk about genocide or what happens in, in the war, it's very rare that people basically make the point that, you know, unless you recognize that Israel has got the right to defend itself by any means necessary, what you're really saying is that it's okay for this country to perish, because that's really the alternative. And I think that, in a sense, it's really quite important that uh, the moral case for uh, what, 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 what Israel is doing, the moral case for opposing Hamas, the moral case for basically uh, what the West is really all about, because this is really all, all, all ultimately an, an attack on Western civilization. Those sentiments have got to be bravely and systematically and carefully put forward, and, and rather than hiding behind, you know, oh yes, there's some bad things on both sides, or you know, I wish you know the war would end, or you know, let's have peace. You know, all these things are remind me of the. Chamberlain kind of characters in the Mm -hmm. 1930s who wanted to basically appease uh, the Nazis as they were emerging. They knew that Nazis were a problem, but they didn't have the bottle to actually stand up and and challenge them and and demonstrate that freedom is something that you don't really negotiate about. That's what we're talking about here. Are we going to negotiate over our freedom? Are we saying that it's okay to take it away from some people, or or are we going to fight against that? 
Frank Ferruti is the executive director of the think tank MCC Brussels. You can find his writings at Frank Ferruti, F-U-R-E-D-I, frankferruti.substack.com. Frank Ferruti, thanks again for joining us. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. This is Chicago's Morning Answer. Your show keeps me alive during the week. There's nobody I'd rather listen to between 5 and 9 in the morning than you guys. On AM 560, The Answer. Parents, grandparents, you might want to be sitting down because this is amazing news. Imagine the student in your family not asking you for money to pay for college, or better yet, not getting into years and years of debt. How is this possible? Scholarships.com, a trusted and widely used scholarship platform that helps your student find scholarships and navigate the financial aid process. Get help to pay for college through a personalized list of scholarships that your student actually qualifies for. Better yet, every scholarship is vetted to ensure accuracy. And now the best part, drum roll please, it's absolutely free. Go to scholarships.com today. Both students and parents can join for free. And within minutes, receive your list of personalized scholarship matches. Check out the wealth of information and resources available at no cost. And read the fantastic reviews from other scholarship winners. Scholarship.